So let's talk about sex. If you have ever been in a relationship where sex is involved, what I'm about to say is probably about to make a lot of sense to you. So in your relationship, did you ever use sex to heal an argument that you had that makeup sex? Well, if you did, this is what actually happened. So I'm going to tell you one thing here. First of all, telepathy is real. The energy that we have that we send to other people, um, this is a real thing. Now, when a couple is intimate, when they are that close together, it is like solid and you are getting that other person's information when you are making that exchange. So what happens? You're resentful, but you're not talking about these things. Well, that underlying resentment is then transferred to the other person during that sexual act. They don't know what's going on. They don't you know, necessarily get all of the information about what you're resentful for or what's going on, but they are picking up the energy of that. Why is this a problem? Because when it goes on and on and on, so let's say you've been married or you've been together for however long and you've been going through this for years together of these little tiny resentments and you're just making up for them and rather than resolving it before you have sex, you just use it to resolve it. It doesn't work. So these underlying resentments um, are transferred to the other person and then pretty soon they start feeling the resentment that you had, you start feeling the resentment that they had, and it just keeps going back and forth. Now, sex can be the most wonderful thing in the world when two people genuinely love each other and when there's no underlying um, negativity that's being sent. So if you are in a relationship and this is you and you know that this is you, um, I'm just going to give you a couple tips to... Um, get rid of that resentment. So first of all, you need to talk about it. Maybe you've already talked about it. Maybe you've thought about it and you just can't get past it. If that's the case, I can help you. That's what I help my clients do. Um, resentment is one of the top things that we work with because many, 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 many people have it and it does affect your life and it does affect your relationships. So now if you have resentment and you have not discussed this yet because you're afraid to bring up whatever was hurtful to you, um, don't be afraid because nothing that is meant to be, nothing that's, you know, good and wonderful can be ruined by a conversation. And if it can, then um, it really wasn't that solid to begin with. So when you're having a conversation, if you want to talk about the things that are resentful for, so here's some hot tips. Do not accuse the other person and say, you did this and you blah, 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 blah. This is all I feel statements because when you're saying I feel, um, it, it is about you. So you could say, you know, you know, a couple months ago when this thing happened, it really made me feel this way. Um, and I would like to talk about it. Now, if your partner agrees, okay, well, let's talk about that. Here's a really good way. It is, do you get interrupted? Do you interrupt your partner? That's the most frustrating thing ever if you can't even get your statement out, right? So if you can agree, okay, let's have this conversation. This is a really, really great, wonderful thing. If you give the other person, you each take five minutes or two, whatever it is that you've decided on. But trust me, it, it takes longer to spit things out than you'd think, especially if you've been holding on to resentment for a long time. But if you can do these I feel statements and, and make it all about you and how you feel, not what this person did to me. You know, you don't want to start a fight. You want to end an internal fight that you've been having. So this is I statements and give five whole minutes. And the other person does not talk during this five whole minutes. So maybe they go first. Maybe you go first. But either way, each person gets five entire minutes that they get to say whatever it is. And the other person, okay, let's say that you're done at four minutes. Well, maybe you can sit there for a minute because it's still their time and think about what they said. Now we always get in that um, defensiveness. Oh, well you blah, 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 blah. That doesn't help anybody or anything when that, when that occurs. What it does is immediately takes away what the other person said and makes it be like, oh yeah, well that doesn't matter because of this. So when the person is telling you how it is that they feel, if you can sit there and genuinely Think about what they're saying and try to put yourself in their shoes because we are all 
living in our own world, but together. And we all have completely different perspectives. So there was a study that was done, and I think it was a hundred people that were involved in this, that they all saw the exact same accident. And the police went and talked to them, and each person had a little bit of a different description, depending on how they were feeling at the time. So let's say somebody was really tired. Well, then maybe this appeared to them in a different way than somebody who had a ton of energy. It appeared to them in a different way. We're all living in our own world. So just because you're saying this and your partner's saying the opposite of that doesn't mean that either one of you is wrong. You are seeing it from your own perspective. As long as we're not dealing with a narcissist who's trying to make you crazy. You know, that's a different story. That's not, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a normal, wonderful, good relationship with two people who are considerate and thoughtful towards the other person. Okay, so I give the person five minutes. Why is this so important to do? When you hold on to those internal resentments, they really build up over time. So let's say that you're the type of person that you're like, oh, I don't like conflict. So you don't, you don't want to say if something bothers you. Well, you now have internal conflict. So you don't like conflict, but you have now taken it on and you're holding and carrying this conflict. Well, what happens when you do that over and over and over and over and over again? Pretty soon, it's going to build up to this massive explosion because you just can't take it anymore because you feel like you're so hard done by, like you are, things are not fair or okay, but why you have allowed this to occur by not saying anything. Now, if, if you're in a relationship where you don't feel safe with your partner um, to be able to say something, um, that's a different story. Um, you need to get out of that relationship. You need to get out of it if you don't feel safe. Now, if you do feel safe, then having this conversation, not gonna be a big deal. So here, here's something. I used to, back when when I was married, I, at the start of being married, wouldn't say. So he would say things that would really bother me, but I would just take it and just like put it inside and not say anything. Well, I realized after a while, like, what? how ridiculous, why am I doing that? Why wouldn't I say something like, hey, what you just said really bothered me and I'm, and I'm actually pretty pissed that you just talked to me like that. So... I would then start saying things like that and immediately it would be met with, oh, oh, sorry, and an apology or whatever. And then I am not holding it. I'm not carrying it in my body anymore. I've let it out. I've let it go. It was met however it was met and I can now move forward and not carry that inside of me. Very important. When you see couples who are old and they freaking hate each other, it's because of this exactly what I'm talking about, that these are all these internal resentments that they've never got over. They sealed the deal by having sex, trying to make it better, doing whatever it was that they did. Who knows? At some point, maybe they, they stopped having sex because they both felt so bad afterwards because it didn't heal what they were hoping to heal. Um, but it is all these resentments that build up over time that then put disease in your body, that then make you really sick that cause inflammation because resentment is attached to anger and anger causes inflammation inside your body. Frustration causes inflammation inside of your body. So we don't want to hold this. Okay, so back to the sex. So if there is two people and let's say there's no resentment um, and you guys really, truly, truly love each other, there is nothing that can bond you or be more magical or wonderful or heavenly than that act of sex that can bring you closer when there is true and genuine love that is there. So I just want to tell you guys my story. Um, so obviously you guys know me here, if you're on my channel, um, that I get a lot of information, you know, from wherever. So the day that I found out, um, or that I was told um, about what my ex had done to me, about betraying me. On the way that morning, I was going out to go visit um, his grandma who passed away that day. Anyways, on my way out there, I was told, the end of today, you're gonna be told some information and it is gonna be 
so much harder than you think it's going to be. Like, oh, I wonder what it is, but I'm just told this information while I'm driving down the highway. So, you know, God, the divine, um, love, the energy that's all around us gives me information a lot. So this might be TMI, but I'm on holidays. We're in Mexico and me and my ex are doing it. When all of a sudden I get this information coming to me because this is the first time now that we have had sex since um, he cheated. And all of a sudden I'm downloaded with all this information of he's he's been with prostitutes. He would have, and I, I immediately talk myself out of this because I'm like, that's impossible. How could that have happened? when would he have the time you know sure he traveled for work all the time which was when that was happening but I had I talked myself out of it but this information was given me during that act why because he was obviously thinking about it um the guilt that was there maybe attached to it or just whatever was going on there I seen it I experienced it so I'm very perceptive. Some people are not quite as perceptive, but here's the thing. They would have still gotten that same information. I'm just very aware of what's in my subconscious because of the work that I do. But if you weren't very aware, you would still have taken that information on and it would still affect you then on a subconscious level. So why did this affect me so much? Um, because I had been met with, I, at that time when that information came to me, um, and I talked myself out of it, here's the problem. I then began to not trust myself because I have this information that is coming through that is just clear as day, clear as day, hundred percent. This is what happened. But I immediately start talking myself out of it because there's just no way that that could be. Of course, there was a way that it could be, and it was right. But then, so for the next, oh, year and a half, I didn't trust myself. So I, I would work with my clients, and I used to walk down to my office. I lived uh, up in Canada, and I only had an office um, up there in the town that I lived in. So, you know, if it's a not the middle of friggin' winter, I would walk to work. While I'd be walking to work, I'd be thinking about the person who was coming, the client that was coming, and all I would do was ask to get information about them ahead of time, whatever it was that they needed to heal. And I would get it. So they would come to me, they'd be like, oh, here's my problem. I would have my notes of what I was already told. Um, and whatever I was already told would always come up in their session and it would have been the root cause of their issue. I had done this forever, for years. But then when I started questioning myself at, the, at that time when I was with um, my ex, I then started doubting this. I started doubting everything. Um, I just didn't trust myself anymore that that information that I was getting was even right and it just didn't matter even though I would you know write it down and it would you know prove to be okay that was the case again. But I, that trust that I had in myself was gone. I don't know if you if you have self doubt, you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about. But what a awful thing that is to have that self doubt when you know that you know inside, right? It's just all it is is a really an internal battle that you have. But short of the long, long of the short, the information that I got was during the actual act. So I say all of that to say, be very, very careful who you sleep with because you are taking on all of their unhealed trauma. You are taking on all of that. When you exchange with a person in that way, you're taking it on. Not only that, but you are also energetically now connected to this person. So, even if it was just, um, you know, a one and done kind of deal, this person has now 
their energy is now attached to you and you're going to kind of have to deal with this at some point. You're going to take it on. And so, so let me tell you something else. So I have a lot of clients that will come, um, and they'll be like, Oh, I feel this way. I feel that way. And sometimes I will be compelled to ask them, is this energy even yours? Because if it seems out of place, let's say, you know, maybe this is you too. Do you feel like you are holding on to any energy that you just can't explain that you're like, this is the weirdest thing? It might not be yours because other people's energies can attach to you. And I'm talking, it's like, just think of it, this is like a wiring system that we are sending out all of these energetic fragments all the time. And when we come into contact with certain people, they attach, they tie themselves on there. This is why cord cutting, if you've ever heard of that, is a real thing. You know, if you have a, an attachment with someone like your ex or something that you need to detach from, there's cord cutting that can be done. And so this is actual energetic um, cutting of cords. So if you sleep with somebody, if you actually have sex with that person, you have a cord that is now attached to this person. So it will be very difficult. Um, first of all, to let this go, to forget about this person. Plus you are going to have to deal with, um, all of that trauma that you have. Now, here's the thing when that, when you are a couple with somebody, this is fine. This is fine. If you're taking on somebody else's stuff because you're a couple, you're going to help them heal by you holding on to whatever it is that they have. If you heal that within yourself, it will heal that within the other person as well. And whatever you have given to them that they heal within themselves will then be gifted back to you because you are now one. So um, I say all of that to tell you, don't use sex to heal a fight. It will not heal it. It will compound it and make it worse. Um, don't sleep with just any random person um, because you're taking on all of that stuff subconsciously. Um, and is it worth it? How do you feel after you've done that? As soon as, soon as you've finished that act, um, how do you feel? You've picked up the other per person's energy. So how did they feel? Because that's probably how you feel right now. So if you have ever been with somebody and then all of a sudden you just feel resentful and this or that, you've picked up their energy. You know, if that wasn't how you felt to begin with, it's because of that. So I say all of that to just be careful. So I think that this is, you know, it doesn't go into this explanation in the Bible, not that you believe in the Bible. I don't believe in the Bible, but it does talk about, um, you know, being with one person. And I believe that that is why, because we don't need to um, take on other people's stuff and help them heal it um, in that way. But here's another thing. So if you're a very enlightened soul um, and you're very uplifted or you're whatever, when you have that act with the other person, they get it too. So we are sharing our goodness, not just the bad stuff. We're sharing the good. So this is another reason why it is so important. You could check out the Mental Cleanse series. You could work with me privately. Um, I love working with my clients. I love working with my clients. I guarantee results because I know that you'll get them. Um, but this is another reason why it's so important to cleanse mentally cleanse away those things from the past so that you don't carry those forward and give them to your partner that you love. Um, inner healing, deep healing is so important. So I've been noticing lately, um, so many more people are talking about the things that they're manifesting that they're like, Oh, I was just talking about this person and then they appeared or I was just this. And they're talking about all these coincidences, these things that have happened. So I've noticed, um, 
how it's really picked up momentum. So I can tell that things have shifted uh, astrologically. Why is this happening right now? This is happening so that people can be aware of why it is happening, so that they can understand that it is them that is um, in charge of their life. It is them that is creating everything in their reality. That's why this is happening, these coincidences. Um, and so it, it's happening so people can be curious about it and ask themselves why. And so those people who are very perceptive or who are in very intelligent and notice patterns and things like that can then notice, oh, this, this pattern, then they can see how these manifestations are happening. And they will know that when they're very cleansed and when they're in a very good uplifted place that they can manifest just like that um, in a positive way. And that then when they're in a low place, um, that they can manifest just like that, but also in a negative way. Anyways, um, just thought I would throw that in there. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed the um, this talk. I would love to hear what you have to say about it or hear about your um, experiences that you've had with that. Um, anyways, I love you all. Um, if you haven't checked out my website yet, go ahead and check out my website. The link is in the bio below and or in the uh, write-up below. Please like and subscribe, share this video um, so that my channel can grow. By the way, I'm going to be going up to my cabin for the month of June, so I'm going to post some videos that are going to be in queue so that they can upload when I'm gone because I'm not going to have any Wi-Fi up there. Anyways, love to you all. Thanks for watching my video, and I will see you guys in the next one.